emotional teenage boy comes into a hospital surprising the nurses with a shoebox. Jeannie Joseph is a neonatal nurse who has worked for over 20 years. She has had her fair share of remarkable childbirth stories to fill your ears with. 14 years ago, she herself played a major role in a story of her own that has now become huge. It all started with a shoebox. Jeannie works at the Swedish American Hospital in Rockford, Illinois. On April 24, 2004, the emergency department called her from the special care nursing home when she came, she saw a teenage boy filled with tears, holding a shoebox. Jeannie was in utter shock when she looked inside the box. There was a three-pound baby sleeping in the shoebox. The baby was wrapped in a dish towel and a doll's onesie. The teen stood by when the hospital staff took the baby into isolation. After three hours, they managed to stabilize the baby. Jeannie noticed that the boy was in tears the whole time so it got her curious enough to approach him for answers. The boy told her that he and the baby's mother, who was 15, wanted to give the baby up. Jeannie agreed to his request, but informed him that after this, it would terminate his rights as a parent, so she would no longer have the authority to update him regarding the baby. She gave him two parental bracelets and time to think things over. The couple came to see their baby at the hospital. Cherish Kotessel, the mother, was clearly saddened, keeping her head down. Jeannie gave a hand and told her, You know that you saved his life, right? I don't want you to hang your head. You gave him the best chance you could. A bond immediately formed between the two. Cherish confided in Jeannie, who gave her a shoulder to cry on. Because her parents wanted her to join college, she admitted that she kept her pregnancy a secret. Her own mom had given birth when she was 15 and Cherish was raised by her grandparents, whom she didn't want to let down. She told Jeannie the horrific way she gave birth to her child. Cherish managed to hide her growing belly in school until her cramps started to occur. She would deal with her labor pains, locking herself away in her room after school. She summoned her boyfriend as soon as she birthed the child. The boy climbed a ladder to get to her bedroom. After feeling helpless and scared, he came and brought the baby to the hospital leaving an explanation before going away. The teen parents laid the baby in a shoebox with the Winnie the Pooh doll. Then they added a touching note that said, We love you. We are just not able to raise you. We want his name to be Alan Corey, and we will hope to be able to see you again. God will be watching over you. The teen dad walked for eight miles to the hospital with the baby in the box. The baby suffered from hypothermia after being born six weeks before Cherish's due date. The baby was severely dehydrated and the doctors tried to treat his injuries from the scissors they'd used at home to cut his cord. It was a miracle to see him breathe because most premature babies cannot do so. There was someone looking down on him, said the doctor who treated him, but Cherish found it impossible to give him up. Jeannie wanted Cherish to be aware of all the possibilities, including open adoption. She also wanted to inform her family. Cherish recalls, she didn't talk to me like I was just some stupid teenager. She talked to me like I was a person. Eventually, the girl decided to tell her mom, who she expected would understand as she had experienced the same thing with Cherish. Cherish led her mother to the incubator and she was astonished. Cherish remained speechless waiting for Jeannie to come to the rescue. Her mom surprised her when she said that she wanted to hold the newborn. A few hours later, her grandmother arrived at the hospital. After feeling the overwhelming sense of support and love, she decided to keep him. The baby, now named Alan, left the hospital after four weeks. Jeannie made Cherish promise to finish school. Her grandparents thankfully offered to look after the baby while Cherish had her school hours. But Cherish enrolled in an alternative school with daycare. She explained that, I do not want to place the burden on them. Cherish and Jeannie lost touch until 12 years had passed. Cherish sent a message on Facebook to Jeannie in 2016. She is 29 and living in Glendale, Arizona. She now has three kids, including Alan, who is currently 5'3 and playing soccer, running cross country, and is also a part of the Naval Academy cadets. Life turned out great, not only for Cherish.
After high school, Cherish went to Rock Valley College to get a nurse assistant certification. For seven years, she worked in an Illinois hospital and in Arizona. After applying for law school, she is now a law clerk until her graduation. She wanted to be a mental health attorney, and it was Jeannie that made her realize this dream of hers. On the topic of Jeannie, Cherish said, I just wanted to let her know how much of an impression she made. We will always be connected because we share this unique story. They have frequent contact on social media, but not in person. One thing Jeannie will admit is that she acknowledged the impact her empathy had on Cherish, although her other colleagues would have done the same. Jeannie said this about herself. It just makes me think, wow, every interaction you have with anybody is so important. To be able to be in this position where I'm part of someone's story of their life, that's such an honor. Jeannie continues to work at Swedish American Hospital and is extremely proud of her involvement in saving Alan's life.